Time for Chalk Talk, where we look at new ways to improve public education in this country. Imagine a school that has a 90% high school graduation rate. Four out of five students go to college. 52% earn a bachelor's degree in four years. Sounds too good to be true? Well, this school really exists. In fact, there are 500 of these schools in 41 states and D.C., and most of these schools are in urban areas. I'm talking about the National Academy Foundation, a network of high school career-based academies. Joining us to talk more about this is the president, J.D. Howe. J.D., good to see you. Thank you for joining us. J.D. Hoy, uh, Hoy I'm sorry. My pleasure. Uh, uh, J.D., tell me uh, what you do differently, what, what, what the answer is to getting that degree uh, of graduation rate, that, that many people going off to college and graduating? Well, I think it's a combination of things, um, but primarily it is really answering the fundamental question most high school students have, which is why do I need to know this and how am I going to use it? And in order to respond to those questions, we partner with industry to make sure that the curriculum that we bring to the classroom isn't just about academic preparation, but also about application and focus on what they want to do with the rest of their life. Uh, I want to talk about uh, some of the things that they do focus on or that you do focus on, uh, the career-focused themes that you have, uh, financial, IT, engineering, hospitality, and tourism. These are all areas where we know there will likely be growth in the next few years in terms of the number of people who are going to be hired. What do you give up by teaching these career-oriented themes? You don't give up anything. You actually uh, enhance what is all already being offered uh, in the basic courses offered in high school. Uh, we align these to make sure that we're bringing to life those core academic courses that we've traditionally looked at as college-based, college-going courses and suggest that students actually reach for higher um, ambition, ac excel more if it's in the context of what they want to use it for. So, for example, in financial services, which is our oldest academy, started in their early 80s in one school in Brooklyn, New York, uh, focusing algebra and making it come to life and making it relevant to what they're going to use it for uh, aspires and causes students to want to take more of those courses. What, what kind of things, uh, I mean, you got 500 of these schools. What do you do now? Are you likely to expand to more right. schools? Are you, uh, how does that work next? Right. We actually have over 500 academies. Uh, there, okay. there may be multiple academies at a given high school. So we have uh, close to 400 actual schools in about 219 school districts, 41 states, District of Columbia and the Virgin Islands. And we grow at between uh, 40 and 70 schools a year that aspire to bring some of these academies into their buildings and make learning more relevant for students. Our focus is on college and careers. We don't see it as a choice, we see it as both. Right. And believe that giving that career awareness and that relevance changes uh, young people's perception in terms of why academics is so important. Right. I want to remind our viewers that 52% uh, of the graduates uh, go to, they go on to earn bachelor's degrees in four years compared to 32% nationally. About half of your schools are in urban areas. We talk so much about public education, uh, the, the, the way it's sort of disintegrated in so many uh, urban areas. Uh, w what are you able to do that, that is different from those stories that we keep, keep hearing? Why are you able to succeed in urban areas where others have not been able to? A couple of, um, and this is built on research, this is not new to us, but it brings it together in one package. Obviously, we know that many young people in urban high schools that are large get lost, and by forming an academy, we have a smaller learning community where young people stay together, are known by their teachers, are supported by their teachers. By bringing business advisory boards as partners to the school, we provide mentorships, uh, expand the student's network, and actually change their horizon in terms of what they want to do and their belief in what they can do. Many of our young people, uh, we expect them to have internship experiences where they take their learning from high school and actually go into the workplace and begin to apply it. And they do a couple of things in that process. Not only do they build a network of adults other than those that they may be around regularly, but teachers also develop partnerships with these industries as well and the industry helps them frame the curriculum, the instruction, to make sure that the problems that are being solved in the classroom are real today, um, which brings it to life. It makes it more relevant, more real for the young person. 
The other piece that's really quite important in the process is the connection between the academics and actual problems or projects that students work on in the classroom. I suspect you and I both had the math problem about the two trains from New mm -hmm. York to Chicago and when they would pass. Uh, those are hypothetical problems. Turning those around and making them real problems, real struggles that engineering firms are having, um, brings it to um, a, a different level of importance in young people's minds. Uh, how do you engage, you, you said something that really interested me, you engage industry in these uh, career areas that you're focusing on, in what way? Correct. Um, several ways. Uh, first of all, the curriculum that we provide, the instructional uh, units of instruction that we offer to schools are actually reviewed by industry leaders to make sure that they are current today and the primary areas of focus that the industry is focused on not 10 years ago but currently. So they take a look at the curriculum that we present and offer to schools. They also form advisory boards as an advisory structure for the school and in so doing offer job shadowing opportunities, uh, often go into the classrooms and help teachers in terms of problem solving on real problems from industry. They offer internships that move the students in the summer and after school into the workplace so that they can show how the learning that they're doing in school is relevant and meaningful to what's happening in the workplace. They are champions for these students and for these schools. Many uh, encourage the college-bound activity. Many of our industry partners have helped us uh, form partnerships with universities to make sure that there's a connection between mm -hmm. our schools and our academies and post-secondary institutions that are looking to recruit students who have diverse backgrounds but have um, excelled at their interest in a given area. You, uh, you've hit on a lot of points that we're all very interested in here. We'll keep uh, watching what you do with great interest. I'm sorry for mispronouncing your name. Uh, J.D. Hoy is the president of the National That's Academy okay. Foundation, joining me from San Francisco. Uh, what a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you very much. Uh, please uh, send you. your comments over to my Facebook page, cnn.com. Uh, uh, let's do it this way. Let's go to facebook.com slash alley uh, about this conversation we've just had. By the way, fantastic uh, input from all of you about the issue of why uh, you think Pakistan is not attracting the attention and the aid. Uh, keep those conversations coming because we're going to have more of a discussion in a little while.